So the last time Chelsea travelled up north, they had a little bit of a hard time against Sunderland. They tied 0-0. Now they have to go up and face Newcastle, which will be a tough task. If you're watching after the game, don't go anywhere. Stick around. The, the goal should be in the link below. And also, make sure to let me know what you think of my tactics. It's Friday. I've got my bow tie on. Let's talk tactics. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about in Chelsea is a little out of the ordinary, but they seem to be picking up a lot of yellow cards. Um, in this game, the previous game, Diego Costa was out. Um, suspended. They did do a great job of replacing him. But in this next game, they have Matic out. And Matic, at the moment, is third highest passing rate in the Premier League. He's a great defensive midfielder. 840 passes. The only people ahead of them are Cesc Fabregas and Yaya Toure. Um, he's a great midfielder, great defensive midfielder, and he provides that stability for Chelsea. So if you look here at the stats for their uh, yellow cards, it's clear. 29 yellow cards and two red cards. They're conceding a lot of yellow cards. And most of the time... Um, these are silly cards. I think Ivanovic is guilty of a few. Um, he's been suspended already. Matic and Costa. So they're not just uh, everyday, ordinary players. Chelsea have a lot of great players. But losing Matic is a big problem, I think. Um, because they're going to have to either think about replacing Mikel and bringing him in uh, and putting him into that sort of defensive midfielder. But we know Mikel, with Mourinho, he doesn't think he's as... Uh, up to the same standard as Matic, or he'd be playing a lot more. And I think that Mikel's a little rash in his tackles as well, and that could be a, a, a place that Newcastle could exploit. But um, we'll talk about that in a little bit when they line up, but let's talk about Diego Costa. So he comes back from uh, this goal scoring, into his goal scoring form. He was suspended in the last game uh, with Drogba coming in and Remy scoring. Could they go with a 4 4 2? I don't know, but let's look at the stats and what they do with Diego Costa because he brings in a lot of goals. So, I mean, this graphic here basically just sums up when you're playing with Diego Costa. In the games that he, he's played in and scored, Chelsea usually win. Um, they, they, they're continuing to score with him up top. They're continuing to find him in those areas. But if you look at their game that they had without Diego Costa, they didn't change much. They just brought in Didier Drogba in their formation that they had <clears throat> playing in the same idea of a 4-2-3-1. Um, so, D Didier Drogba... Held the line well. He doesn't provide that same mobility and movement as he did in his previous years or, or what Diego Costa brings. But he's still strong, still got on the score sheet. What I want to talk about is that gentleman that came on off the bench, um, like Remy. <clears throat> he would start at any other Premier League team. I'm telling you that right now. The guy is so powerful, provides a dynamic movement. And if you look here, this is a proposal what I think they could go with against Newcastle. And the reason I say that they could go with this is because when you're playing uh, Diego Costa up top, what you want to do is exploit him in the box. And when you play him at a four, when you play a 4-2-3-1 with Matic and Fabregas, Fabregas can get up into these areas and he can do a great job of finding Diego Costa with his runs in behind, finding Diego Costa through these gaps. But without Matic, I just think Fabregas might be a little bit hesitant to go as far forward if they play Mikel. But I wanted to pose the idea, could they go with a 4-4-2? which would allow for Loic Remy to partner Costa up top. I think that's a mouth-watering proposition, to have Loic Remy and Diego Costa up top, because then you could put uh, Diego Costa into the last man and do what he does well. I feel that when he drops way deeper, like against Sunderland, he gets caught up in a lot of the interaction. John O'Shea followed him way over here sometimes in the game, would make tackles here, and, and Costa would get frustrated. He wasn't using the best of his ability to get in the box. He was trying to hold the ball up in the higher areas. So when you've got someone like Loic Remy, who can make these dynamic runs at speed the way he did against um, Tottenham in the last game to score easily. You can then preserve Diego Costa to get in the box and use your width of maybe Hazard or Will Ayan or maybe Oscar or Scherler, whoever you can bring into that formation. The only idea is it will leave a little bit uh, of, of an idea of playing Fabregas with Mikel, Fabregas with Oscar. That would mean Fabregas would sit a little deeper, which I don't think is ideal. So it is something that Mourinho could toy with. I think going to Sunderland and just hitting a brick wall the last time is going to have him rethink. He could go with a 4-4-2. I would love to see it. I would love to see Remy uh, uh, partner Diego Costa up top. I think it'd be fascinating to see. But let's talk a little bit about Newcastle because they were on a great run of form. Pardew at the, Pardew at the start of the season um, was being considered one of the managers to get sacked early on. I think the true Jordy was leading that charge. He didn't want them to play uh, to continue with Alan Pardew. But the thing that I like about Alan Pardew is he's got right behind his team. Newcastle have figured out what works for them and what doesn't. But they've hit a little bit of a snag again. Will they be able to bounce back against Chelsea? This is what's most important playing against Chelsea, is these guys here. You're holding midfielders. So with Teote playing in there, I think he pushes forward a little bit too much. As we've seen, Lee Carthamo basically ushered his back four when Sunderland played against Chelsea. They came back, they would defend like this. This is the way Sunderland would defend the Newcastle's rivals. And I think they're going to have to basically mirror what their rivals did against Chelsea. Is have like a bank of five 
with another holding midfielder to chase the pressure around here, pick up the ball, try and cover maybe Fabregas' gaps, but then have someone like Lee Katam or Teote, if you get him disciplined enough, sit right he in here and his job is to basically cover this area and let no shots go through. So if you look at the formation that they had against Burnley, they went with that standard formation that most teams are going with, is 4-2-3-1. Cissé does a good job of holding the line up well, but when you're playing against Chelsea um, at home, you shouldn't be going in to play as if you were playing against an everyday Premier League at home. You've got to try and conserve your energy, try and hold basically and frustrate Chelsea because he's, he's Sunderland so expertly done. They had a bank, as I said, of five or six back there and basically relied on their counter-attack to try and cause any sort of problems. And with Cissé up top, he can definitely cause problems up there. I wouldn't imagine that uh, Newcastle would be going out with an attacking frame of mind against the league leaders, but it's important to have the holding midfielders in there and basically try and preserve... As much of that energy in the final third and try and hit them on the counter-attack when they try and frustrate Chelsea in their own half. So if you look at the goals that Newcastle seem to be conceding, 46% are happening inside the 18-yard box. 44% it seem to be allowing shots outside of the box. And 62% of their shots are coming right through the middle. Um, so it's, it's hard to play against Chelsea if you're going to try and frustrate them. So much. I felt that Sunderland were going to have a, a moment where they would just have a lapse of concentration. All credit to them, they didn't. I think Newcastle can play this way. The only thing that I'm worried about is whether Teote will wander away and whether the holding midfielders will like that concentration and Chelsea can make the, the drives through the middle. It's going to be a hard task for Newcastle. I think they've got to rely on counter-attacks, as I continually reiterate. Um, but you never know. Chelsea had a tough time going to Tyneside against Sunderland. Maybe Newcastle can mirror that and even snag a goal. I don't imagine it will happen. I think Chelsea will come away with a 2-0 victory um, against Newcastle. So if you're watching after the game and I'm right or wrong, leave a comment in the section below. Don't forget to subscribe to TIT Sports and follow us on Twitter.